Merry Christmas to all, and thanks for joining us here at the Little Home Church by the Wayside in Wayne, Illinois, to celebrate the first Sunday of Christmas. This morning will not be a normal order of service, as we will be worshiping in a bit with fellow United Church of Christ members around the world in a special virtual worship service. Please join me in our pastoral prayer for the morning. Let's begin again with a moment of silence to remember our joys and concerns for ourselves and those around us. God of mystery and love, help us move from the sweet experience of the birth of the Christ child into the reality of the powerful witness of Jesus, who will be Messiah for us all. Remind us again that this season is not about bows and boxes, feasts and family. It is about preparing us, your people, for a mission and ministry of hope and peace for this aching and sometimes angry world. Empower us to be people of great faith, placing our trust in you, believing that peace is not only possible, it truly can happen if we will work with you and with one another. As we have spoken in our hearts and with our voices, our concerns for those near and dear to us, remind us that you hear these prayers and you respond with love to each one. Let us be in prayer for one another, for our church and our community, for our nation and our world, for all Earth's people and creatures, and that we be those who promote peace first. Give us courage and strength. Help us reach across areas that divide, offering compassionate assistance wherever it is needed. Bless each one of us in your service, for we ask this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is the time in our worship service where we actively and intentionally take part in the support of the ministry of Christ. If you are a member of the Little Home Church, we encourage you to continue your pledge and financial support. And if you are visiting with us today, we welcome your gifts as well. You may donate by Venmo, PayPal, or by sending a check into the church office through the email. The information is on the screen. O Lord, the light of your peace shines like the dawn. Give us eyes of faith so that we will see that Christ is present in our midst. You have covered your people in the finest clothes, the garments of salvation. Receive these gifts as a sign of our gratitude and commitment to live into our new reality in Jesus Christ. We ask this as a people clothed in your Son's grace. Amen. This morning, we have a gift from our denomination, the United Church of Christ. It's called A Very UCC Christmas 2020. The service includes 11 digital hymns, a movie, a pageant of lessons and carols produced by the national setting of the United Church of Christ. 
There are also Zoom meetings included in the video with church leaders from around the country sharing their joys and concerns about staying connected during this pandemic time. So sit back and worship in scripture, dialogue, and song with our fellow saints from around the world. From the Gospel according to John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through the Word, and without the Word, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in the Word was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Eve. 
The year is 2020. There is a global health pandemic. There is also the pandemic of racism and surprisingly, a spreading awareness of its impacts within our systems. Sadly, there is more isolation, more despair, and more hopelessness among humanity than can be collectively remembered for nearly a century. Many houses of worship are trying to find safe ways to gather. Many have not held in-person gatherings for months. Having great concern about the mental health of their people, leadership within these churches are desperately seeking recommendations from public health experts, each community knowing that they have unique contexts. Christmas is quickly approaching and most everything feels and looks to have gone off the rails. Let's journey to one of our typical Christian communities, First Reformed Congregational United Church of Christ, and observe as they struggle to find the baby Jesus as well as to hold on to hope. Okay, team, it's November and I'm exhausted. The first Sunday of Advent lectionary of this week is so appropriate. In Isaiah, calling God down to reckon with this world and accusing God of hiding their face from us. Can you guys see me? Yes, Laurel, we see you. Is that Kent? Hi, Kent. Hi, Laurel. How are you? I'm glad you, I'm Hi. Glad you figured out how to unmute yourself, our great tech person that you are. I got it. You guys see my dog? She's so cute. Aww. Sorry, I'm late. Oh. Okay, we're going to center now. Start with the scripture from the Advent Lectionary, which is 64, chapter 64, verses 1 to 9. Something in there is reflecting where I am. I will start and then we'll all go around and, and for each person, portion, okay? Oh, that you could tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nation might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you and your ways, but you were angry and we sinned because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh God, you are our parent. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O God, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. Amen and an amen. And it feels like that sometimes. I don't know how to do this. How can we do Christmas together when everything literally and figuratively has been on fire. Now, I want to call on God and say that the work has shifted so much this year and we've adapted in considerable ways. Why don't we have an opportunity to share some of that? For instance, we started having worship online. Well, we set up a better phone tree groups of small groups of people who were physically close to each other. I actually got a care package in the mail from from some of the, the Shadon folks who were putting them together. 
Why? Right. We had to consult with the attorneys to figure out whether our meetings were legal or not, if Zoom is an appropriate platform to do this by, and if we can vote, and if those votes will quote unquote count in this season of counting. <laughs> Thank God for those lawyers, eh? Yes. Um, and I'm now producing worship as a show, and it takes me 20 hours just to get it together. <laughs> And then your tech volunteer team finishes it. Yay for the tech. And what about those bloopers? I mean, we have recorded <laughs> all of the bloopers on our church roll, and uh, that's got to be part of it, too. Yeah, I think that's what we should use to start annual meetings. And yeah. think, about, think about our folks who all of a sudden have to start giving online. Now, which online portal should we use? Should we use Tithely? Can we text by phone? Do I need my credit card numbers to figure out how to give money to, to, to support the church? It's all so much to take in. For sure. I mean, they're all great suggestions and great, you know, things that we've done. Um, I'm not so sure. I'm thrilled at the idea of your pastor being shown in these bloopers. But anyway... I'm just not sure. I think sure. that's the best part of the bloopers, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It Keep really talking. humanizes you, Pastor. Oh, yeah. Yes, it does. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Embarrass the pastor. I see what's happening here. It's part of the job description. Okay, and what about okay. those cats that just come right in the camera? There's so much. There's so much. And I'm just not sure we can pull it together on top of all of this. How do we find the hope of incarnation in the midst of such pain? How can we add a pageant? Well, you know, thinking about a pageant, what if the pageant was was basically a blue Christmas service? I uh -huh. mean, it's been such a year. You know, people need to feel their feelings to move through them. All the grief, we have to feel it. We have to decrease the stigma and shame about what we're feeling. You know, when you look at the statistics, 40% uh, of Americans surveyed this summer are experiencing anxiety and depression. And we know that communities of color, black and brown people, people living in poverty, they don't have access to affordable and quality health care. And then you add, you know, all the financial debt, people who have lost their jobs. I mean, every person has been touched by loss. And we, we need to grieve and feel our feelings. So what if we do it like a blue Christmas? Gracias, hermana. That's, that's a great idea. And and what are the image of the Holy Family that we want to project and how we talk about this and how we market it? So many churches just have the whitewashed Jesus and Holy Family. And we know that sure is in that case. Baby Jesus was a brown refugee. And, and right, I agree. I hear you. Making this as a blue Christmas may be the way to bridge all of that. You know, one of the hardest things about the pandemic is that we cannot safely be physically present together to worship. And our mm -hmm. theology is an incarnational theology, you know, Emmanuel, God with mm -hmm. us. And we mm -hmm. can't sing together in person and Zoom singing just doesn't work. And you know, if people try to sing together in person, that's a super spreader. And so as I think about our churches and our pastors and our chaplains and all our authorized clergy, um, how are we going to get through Advent and Christmas without you know, singing our hymns together and, and holding the candles and, you know, silent night? I mean, the candle at Christmas Eve service is my absolute favorite. For a lot of us, it's our favorite time of the year it's you know a lot of times it's when the college kids come home it's when the grandkids come to church you can see from year to year how much they've grown and we can't forget the 2020 census which started with such high hopes but was interrupted by a plague and repressed by a demagogue. Did you know that they didn't even count the babies born from January through April 2020 of this year as part of the census? 
it looks like even King Herod cared more about an accurate census. And that's saying a lot. But we can ask people, I think, as we prepare for Advent and talk about the census, to remember that each person counts and ask Congress to make sure the data is as good as possible so that we aren't using bad or inaccurate data to determine federal spending and congressional representation. Hey, did you, are you guys, can you still see me? Uh oh. Am I on camera? I think we lost someone. Oh my. Guys, I think I lost oh. you. Did uh, I? Are you serious? Yeah. Am I? Oh, now we can see you. Pastor. Did, okay. You know, we're having so many technical problems here. You know, let's just pray on it and we'll come back to this later. Okay? Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. After a technological flaw, the council voted by email to pass the pageant onto the budget committee to review for approval. Nevertheless, this church has even more challenge before it especially with a potential capital campaign before them. Well, everyone, we've run the numbers, and with income from pledges and, well, no loose offerings, let's be frank, the numbers are so far down. Um, I don't think there's any way that we can present the balanced budget that we talked about to the church council, and you know how much the congregation is counting on us to present that balanced budget to vote on at the January meeting. I mean, if we get into any more deficit, I'm afraid that that whole sanctuary reservation is going to be off the table. And I was so counting on getting rid of that pea green carpet. I mean, the sea green, so much more gorgeous and plush and shaggy. Ugh, it was the most talked about thing at last year's annual meeting. The congregation is really counting on it. Well, I hear that the carpet is a priority, but we have to think about this differently. If we focus on the carpet, then that's our mission. Do not be afraid to be bold in mission and build church differently. This year has brought so much. Don't you think there should be a shift in how we do things and how we view mission. Uh, Y'all, I, I need to say I'm here, but there's so much going on in my household right now. I'm just, I'm, I'm present. I, I'm sorry okay. I'm a little bit late, okay. um, but I'm attentive as I can be. Oh, it's good to have you. Glad you're here. Um, um, I thought buildings were important to you. I mean, haven't you always said if they, if we build it, they will come, or if we remodel it, they will come, or there's something like that that you've always said. I mean, we need that plush carpet for the souls of our members. Okay, okay, okay. Remodel it and they will come? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I cannot. I, I am more invested in the souls of our people and less invested in the souls. You know what I'm saying? And... Honestly, I feel like it's more of what God is calling us to do. And I, I just, I'm sorry, Tara. I don't think it's be comfortable in the sanctuary. Amen to that. And I have never, ever said build it and they will come. Because the church is not in the building. The church is outside of the building. So therefore, we need to take it to the streets. There is work to do. And Jesus entering the yeah. world shows us a way to live and a way to be church together, inside and outside of the church. I move that we pour energy into this pageant 
as a visual commitment to the gospel. Hallelujah. Yes. 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 I second. I second. Thank you, Susan. Okay. It's been moved and seconded, but let me start the discussion. Now, you know that my grandfather, he was treasurer here for 70 years. And the thing that was most important to him was maintenance, building maintenance. And now as the current budget chair and the executive of that endowment, I need to take on his passion and it's important to me too. Okay. Okay, Tara, I hear that. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying. I, I, I hear that. That's okay. But let's continue the conversation and maybe talk less about specifics and more about what, what it is that your grandfather really loved about coming together and loved about this space. Well, he would often talk about how great it was that the church community came together um, in times of crisis. I mean, the whole family tells the story every time we get together about that year that the barn burned down and it was the congregation, the community that came together and raised funds and actually raised the whole barn itself. And, and in fact, if it weren't for that, uh, the business wouldn't have thrived in the way that it has. And, we, well, he wouldn't have had the money to, to start this endowment in the first place if it weren't for that. While I appreciate the historical content and your grandfather's story and legacy with the church, I think we can show a commitment to him and your entire family. But right now, it's a crisis. So we need to come together. Well... I'm, I hear you. I mean, those are the same words, right? I just, I just said crisis and coming together. And, uh, you know, when you, when you say it like that, um, I, I guess I'm going to have to think about it differently. I mean, you know, what, what if the church is, is more than, than what happens inside? What if the church needs to find some new ways to come together? You know, uh, I'm going to have to sit with that for a bit. Yes. Yes, come together. Let's get back to it. Let's come together. What about this pageant? Um, Katie, I think you're muted. I'm so sorry. Uh, That's thank okay. you. <laughs> yeah. And I was just so excited that you, you, yes, let's come together. Let's think about it. Let's get back to it. Let's get back to coming together and talk about this pageant. Okay, well, we got to vote then, right? Okay, um, and, and I'm going to pray on what Susan said and what you've said about souls and souls and souls. Okay, but I, but I think this pageant is important. Um, so so let's, let's talk about it moving forward. Then let's let our money tell our mission story. Um, am I right? Do it, are we in agreement there? Okay. All right, so all in favor, if you could um, put a hand up, hand up, that you push that, um, there's a, a button down here at the bottom where you push it up. Okay, I see, I see two hands, hands up. Okay, all right, then all in favor, great, onward. We've decided to continue with the pageant and we're gonna let our money tell our mission story. Let the pageant con continue. I am so excited about this direction we are taking. You know what the angels say, do not be afraid. And you know what Mary says, let the money move towards the mission and the poor be filled with good things. Hallelujah. Let's move on. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just glad we made a decision. <laughs> And Mary said, My soul magnifies you, O Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for you have looked with favor on the lowliness of your servants. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is your
your name. Your mercy is for those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm and you have scattered the proud in the thoughts of their heart. God, you have brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly, filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. You have helped your servant Israel in remembrance of your mercy according to the blessing you made to our ancestors, to Sarah and Hagar and their descendants forever and ever. The budget committee was moved to doing mission, having heard the voices of angels in Do Not Be Afraid. So despite multiple setbacks, the pageant is good to go. Let's see how Faith Formation is illustrating this vision in their meeting. So this has now gone through church council and through the budget committee. Before we begin, is someone taking notes? I'm here and I'm taking notes for us. Uh, my coworker is doing her homework and she might distract me from now and then, but I am present. Great, thank you. Oh goodness, we have what we need in place. All of the administrative pieces are in alignment and we figured out who will do what in order to move forward. Bring volunteers, committees, let's gather. Bring 20% of the people you know. Find the folks who say yes to the pageants, gather them, assign them new roles. Oh, oh, we can do this together. Oh, oh, Jesus is come. <laughs> but as any church knows, so few of us are doing all the background pieces for the whole of the congregation. That's just real. 20% of people do 80% of the work. Rather than goofing about it, let's find the right people aligned with their passion to be involved. But I want to be the octopus. I can see that you're all about those popular Christmas movies. There's so much comfort there. What are your favorite Christmas movies? Answer in the chat. In the meantime, what else do we all need to know in preparation? Well, we can be socially distant and spiritually close. Away from each other this season will be, and helping each other stay healthy and free. But Christ, child, he's coming, and with him we'll see a new way of living with justice and peace. Seriously? Well played, although... That last rhyme was a bit of a slant. I'll let it slide, since I'm an octopus. What other details do we need to be attentive to, though? Well, I actually think that the argument could be made that this year will be more authentic than most. So think about it. We need an incarnation of hope. We need to remember what our ancestors have carried in faith across so many generations and we're also well prepared to go to the source. The masks will cover the smell in the barn. Jesus, our brother, strong and good, was humbly born in a stable root, and the friendly beasts around him stood. Jesus, our brother, strong and good. Well, you didn't need to change anything about that hymn for it to be relevant. Just because our bodies aren't near doesn't mean that we aren't the body of Christ together. Let's welcome the incarnate Christ in the world in Jesus, creatively, intentionally, in awareness of all that is broken, and clinging to the hope of God in the world. Oh, I'm glad to be with you this day. We can do this together. Even my octopus and I. It just seems like each of us in our own turn find 
and lose hope again and again, ebbing and flowing like the tide. But it's only in community with all of you and solidarity together that we sustain a perpetual hope. It seems like when one person's hope is gone and at low tide, they can be bolstered by the hope of others. It's we're at our, our strongest, most creative, and most effective when we when we choose to work in concert, taking collective action. Right now, so often these days, it feels like the threads of our society and ecosystem are just pulling apart. I think we need to be prepared as it's happening to, to reweave our society, to truly uphold the dignity and value of each and every person, knowing that all of us bear the image of God. So let us usher God incarnate into the world once again and strive towards hope together. You know who you need to ask? Great. And for those of you watching, when someone comes to ask you, holding up an offering of tender and wondrous hope, consider joining us. We need you. It's up to all of us to tell the story. Will you join us? Then knowing that you have a yes within you, let's close the meeting with portions of Psalm 89 with praise and awe. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth, I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. You said I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to my servant, David. I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. Then you spoke in a vision to your faithful one and said, I have set the crown on one who is mighty. I have exalt exalted one chosen from the people. I have found my servant David with my holy oil. I have anointed him. My hand shall always remain with him. My arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not outwith him. The wicked shall not humble him. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and steadfast love shall be with him, and in my name his horn shall be exalted. I will set his hand on the sea and his right hand on the rivers. He shall cry to me, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Amen. Amen.
A reading from the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I'm a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 24. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. Each winter as the year grows older, we all grow older too. The chill sets in a little colder, the verities we knew seem shaken and untrue. But I believe beyond believing that life can spring from death, that growth can flower from our grieving, that we can catch our breath and turn transfixed by faith. The Birth of Jesus, Luke 2 verses 1 through 7. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus 
that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Jesus, Jesus, oh, what a wonderful child. Jesus, Jesus, so holy. Chapter 2, verses 8 through 14. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of God stood before them, and the glory of God shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, God. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom God favors.
Luke chapter 2, verses 15 through 20. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Hope you've enjoyed our Christmas pageant. And from all of us in the national setting, to all of you wherever you may be, Merry Christmas. I'd like to bring a benediction, a, a closing blessing to us all. And so wherever you may be, I invite you to bow your heads in prayer for the blessing of God. May God, creator of all that is good, in whose image you have been fashioned, May Jesus Christ, God's only Son, who every Christmas reminds us of how he came to incarnate and embody the love of God. And may their Holy Spirit be, rest, and abide with you forevermore and fill you with the love of our Redeemer Jesus in this Christmas season and throughout the coming years. Amen. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright round yon virgin mother and child. Holy infant, so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace.
sleep in heaven, leave Noche de paz, noche de amor. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise ones from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road.
Christ was born and God showed us salvation that blessed Christmas born. Oh, Lord.